Hello, James here with another video. Um, I saw something recently, and it was a really tragic case of uh, a young black man that got shot by a police officer, which that's nothing new. But did what, what, what made this story unique that this young man was um, favorably liked in his community in Wiley, Texas. It was in some part of Texas, a little small Texas town. And he was for the cops. He, he you know, he was a kind of go-getter. He was a star high school and college athlete. You know, he did, and he had friends from all different walks of life. And, and it was a real sad situation in what happened to him. But recently, something has come up that having some people in the black community take a second look at, at it because they were upset because despite of all the things that's been happening, black men and black women have been getting shoot, killed like Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Ahmaud Aubrey, um, did, and there's a few other, um, Brandon Clark up there in Wisconsin, and then many countless and more. But this young man tried to be a good, solid citizen, tried to be the go-between. In fact, he loved it, you know, all people on the, believing that he's from his background, sound like he was a good Christian man because he just loved all different type of people. And he was pro-Trump. He was anything blue lives matter he, he believe in standing by the police but here is the thing his name was Jonathan Price but here here was the thing that Jonathan Price didn't understand that even though that he was he was good and even though that he that there were people that were white Hispanic and some were black thought he was good there there are some people among black people have a confederate mindset and I have it on my one if you come to my page you will see that there were black confederates that were fighting against the north where black soldiers were there in blue uniforms and white soldiers that were in blue uniforms they took on the same mindset because it was like that side of the part of the country versus our side of the country. Despite that, and this this goes back to the history, I'm, I'm putting a connection to it, to this. So there are some people in small towns, it's not just, an, and I'm not trying to make this a, a southern thing, a northern thing, because you got some black people in the north, it's just many black people just up here, just the same as with some black people down. They, they have a slave mentality. And that they've been so used to being the good black person that they think that because they you know a lot of people were white and other people liked him because he was not a physically intellectually a threat. So he's part of him. he's 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 a, what I call a yes man, and everything is about it. In other words, he's the kind of guy where the the uh. Uh, a mega hat for if you vote for Trump, if you know if you want to go into politics. But these people always, what I'm saying is these people always been around us who was black, and so they will fight you as a black person just as hard to against another black person because that's in it. They don't believe that. There was a, I did also on my video will show you that there were black people. With, other, with the white people with the Confederate flag didn't want to see the flag go. They feel like that, that rebel flag has been taken across the country. It affects their, affects their heritage. And then, this, and then you say, wow, why would a black person will fight for something like that? Go look at, it's called Black Soldiers and, and Confederate. And you will see on that page and that there were there are black people and I saw a black female 
and a black male standing with the Confederate flag among white their white counterparts. And that's something that that's that's some that some people don't want don't want to face it. We are our own worst enemy as a people. We we are our own worst. It, and that's why I say you can't even trust some black people. And I have been out in towns where black people be just as precious look towards you as, as white people do. They don't even look at they they get and I know that's kind of hard to believe, but they what it is is that they've been socially conditioned. They think that they are part of them. And they really do. They 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 pick up the area. And a lot of black people don't understand this. Just because as a sometimes something it looks like it start out as race, but when you go among and this is and I guess this is not just down in this little Texas town. You got black people here in Ohio and other states up here that live in these small towns, outskirts of these major cities like Cleveland, Columbus, and I have been through this town and I just want want to know and just say, hey, they won't even give you they won't even look at you. And they won't even give you eye contact. And I'm like, wow, damn. But yeah, there are some black people who are like that. That's why I said some things and they and you might it might and as a black person, you're gonna trip out when you see this, but it's like no, it's built. It's 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 the magnitude of the Jack, Jonathan prices. So they think that it goes back to, you know, that's why everything. Why do black people keep think think bring up this was part of the slavery mentality? If you look at movies like the Django and um, all those slave movies, you would see the mentality of the black people. I mean, go check out any Civil War movie. Black there are black people are descended from that, and they carry the same spirit of the black people back then, just as well as the white people. They're, they're, they're servitude, and they and they feel like you're being a troublemaker when 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 you're a black person that don't agree with 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 um with with the opposition. There's something is wrong with you. And that's why you have a Brandon Tatum, you have a Candace Owens, you have a, a, a conservative, it, and they just don't. And and I know you and I know if you're a black person, you know you and I know that that it doesn't matter what your if you think above that, you see that this has nothing to do with the political affiliation. When you look at the history of ra racism, and some black people don't get this. Because they believe that no matter is opposing from the right or opposing from the left. When you, I said, some people are directly racist have said this. And, and, and I'll never forget when I listened to it, was a segment off the of one YouTube channel called Jason Black. When he catched the segment, I didn't see the video. When they interviewed Richard Spencer, and he specifically said, We want, we feel like we are being being uh, annihilated out as and, and we are the patriots we basically in so many words we are the white patriots where is white woman white male white child but black people feel like they want to tag along you have tag along too that be a part of the america they had, that part of america say that you know you a servitude right if i be a part of this america you still gonna be my my personal servant. They don't understand. They don't get. They don't get this. They they, they think that they, that you know. Oh, you know. Even Charles Barkley, that saying he told me straight in his face that look, no, you mean I can't live on the same block? No, you can't live in the same block. Uh, no, you, you you can't live in the same block. Why? Because if your kids make it with my kids, we go. It's gonna go mix. This is the truth. This is the truth. Long you can be my my black friend, but be my black friend as just be my black friend. Yo, I want to be a black friend, be part of your family. No, you, you don't understand this. You you you're black. People, these black people don't understand this. You're black. I'm gonna put it in, in straight up in a nutshell. 
and I said, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, I know people that are white that are cool, but I know my, but I know my place, because well, I know my. What I mean, I know my place. I know my reality, because even though we we can congregate, talk about certain topics and everything, but in the, at the end of the day, some black people don't understand you're black to them. Your physical melanated skin is a it it. it it's, it's a disturbance to them. And this is the way, this is what's come down to. And Jonathan, did, and people like Jonathan Price didn't understand that. So he come, he would have been the kind of young man that was stood by the Confederate flag. That's why I said that. If he's for, you know, certain political things, and I mean, how you feel about Trump, that's, that's your business. But, but, but Blue Lives Matter, and I'm saying that all saying, all police officers lies don't matter but dang but the certain police officers that he knew that weren't abiding by the law and that were racist he had a, a letter knowing that the, that that they let him that then they had him off that they were racist towards other black people that he made is exceptional and he don't understand you may as an individual be exceptional but somebody who you might be cool with, they ain't gonna find exceptional. I don't understand with some black people with this mindset. You know, it, it doesn't and like that again and go back with that my I said I have I have friends and I've been in towns. I know I know I have a friend of mine that lives in a predominantly white town. But realistically I'm a black man I'm a black man. I want I want to stress this out. I'm a black man, and I said that no matter what diff, what um, ag angle that it is, you could you know you get these black folks that don't think that they're black, <laughs> and they think because because they live in a uh, small town, and they they are conditioned to think that way, and I said it's funny. And I mean, at the same time, it's sad at the same time because they really think that you're equal. There are some people out there I'm not gonna find you equally. And like you just the black black friend, maybe to come over for a ball game or two, but that's as that's as far as to go. You will never be a part of their clique. You will never be a part of them. You may be cool, we have a couple of drinking buddies, but you can. But I'm, I'm trying to tell you. See, I, I used to have this mindset too, and and I was back when I was younger. And I, I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying that it don't happen, but there's certain things that some happen that there's some people that they jealousy, they envious of us as a people and it comes out subtly I made a video about this and I was I was trying to be a friend let me tell you a short story about myself and this is going to shock a lot of people when I was back in Youngstown years ago Youngstown Ohio because I'm I went to school and I'm originally from up there and I had, I was like Jonathan, I had black friends, I had white friends. And so, and I didn't understand, I was going through an emotional time in my life because um, I'm trying to have as many friends and try to be as very accepted that what I was. But see, I made friends with the wrong type of individual who was white. And so James, which, I'm about to I'm about to about to go there. So, how it started out with, and uh, I'm going I'm not gonna say his last name. I'm, I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna say his first name. His name was Steve, and my my, my friend John. We know who this person was, and see, John was his friend who was also black. Um, you know, they, they kind of kicked the floor around for a minute. And then when John, so when John introduced me to him, 
Then I start hanging out because okay, he must be pretty cool because John, his friend, and we live out here in the suburban uh, school, so Steve might be must be cool with with black people. Well, leads us to say, I hung around with Steve for a while, and I saw a, a side Steve that I was shocked. He was the kind of individual that. You know, for one thing, you know, he come from a rebellious background. He's, he never really had no strong discipline as far as his parents. Mama and daddy give him anything that he want. That tells you what his character. Um, I mean, he, he do things with kind of his dad, help him get the business, help him get property. He had a marriage. He didn't treat his first wife right. You know, and I and I was around during his friendship. And I even been around some of him and his friends. So I'm gonna tell you something that really gonna shock most people about how some people think. Not all white people are like this, but I'm gonna give you something to think about. So one thing, you know, some people like to play pranks, right? You know, some people like to play jokes and, 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 and play pranks. And here I'm trying to, trying to be accepted among being his friend. But I'm I'm not his friend, I'm his black friend. And I kept hanging around with this dude and he's making racial jokes. And not only did he make racial jokes, his friends said what well, what was in on it too. And this was the embarrassing part. I didn't think they was going to do it right. They came in. So one time, this is this is back, and this is it's a place outside of Youngstown it, um, that we lived at. So one time, and it, it kind of, when I look back, I can't believe what was I, I was, what was I thinking? And it could go to this extreme, this is the slave mentality. His friends came dressed as the KKK. Hear me out as a joke. This was a joke and it shocked his neighbors. And they laughed about it. They laughed about it and and at the time I was kind of like a Jonathan. I just kind of like oh just kind of but it, it really wounded me. It shocked the doggone neighbors. Some that were white that they shocked them. And it really was like, wow, I can't believe these, these, these guys, these boys did something like that. And they knew that was coming up there. And they did this and they showed their true colors. And they thought it was a, they thought it was a joke. Right then and there, I looked at Steve a different way. And it really, it, it, it almost turned me to the point that I looked at white people a different way. I almost became what s some white people think about black people. Because of, that's it. if this is what is deep rooted in a joke, just a joke. It's just a joke. Oh, you know, they, they, this, right? they know the history of the KKK. They know, know this and they know this just to stir up something because they think it's a prank. But sooner or later it's going to come out. This is what people like Jonathan don't know. And he thinks that he's a part of them. But but when that, that officer shot him, he didn't use rationality. Now, there's a case where when you look at it, it this is out of out of Texas, a small Texas town. And and people are trying they just can't believe it, they shot. But there are some people like that, uh, that that the racism is subtle. And you have to watch what type of people you are around. And that's not just in the city among our, our own people. But you got to watch around the other people who you're around. 
Now this officer didn't use any rationality, no rationality whatsoever, and she, all he saw was a black man. He was he was met the two to turn the gun, hit the suspect, and shoot the gun. And even a state trooper says that it was no cause for that. This has been a thing going on. And some black people like Jonathan don't know we in the middle of a, of a of spiritual warfare. We are in a spiritual warfare. Because something, if you keep seeing case after case after case in small towns, this is not just in a bigger city like Minneapolis. This is not just in a bigger city like, um, um, let's say like Louisville, Kentucky. This ain't just in, the, in, in other places, Los Angeles, California. This is, this is a spiritual thing, people. There are people who are in certain positions and there are people who are getting away with behind the bash and getting away with murder murder out of it and these and some are negro conservatives don't understand that they think well okay you know then he, see george floyd you know he he, he was a, he had some drugs this is how the, the black conservatives is well he had some drugs and said that's no wonder you know that candace owens would say something like this now jonathan price who has no drug in his system went down there tried to dissolve a situation to help break up a fight, went to go shake the white officer's hand. Now, you, you black conservatives, explain this. You explain this. He was the good guy. He liked cops. He was a Trump supporter. Explain, there was nothing in his record. He was a good, he was a good guy. He just happened to have melanated skin. Now do you see that we, and here you warn against your own people. You warn against your own people and you don't even know you're in a war. <laughs> see some black people, you don't even know you're in the midst of a war. That there's people psychologically among other white people that want to kill you. Not every white person do, but there's something that don't they see is a mechanism. That, you know, they, they, they in a law enforcement, even there was proof that by the FBI that these people are infiltrated into police departments or executing from the FBI. That we had these, these certain individuals, nationalists, skinheads, you name it, part of clan, that take joy of sacrificing a black person, shooting them. And blood like it's it's like a game, whatever. Then they don't get they get off. And then from what I heard recently, it was one officer that picked up and went to another went to another police department. And I think it was one out the case out Oklahoma. I'm trying to tell you. We are you know, and you got some black people like Jonathan Price, they don't understand this. They don't understand this. There was a young young man in Indiana. He was an activist for them. He was his he was a, a local out in Indiana. He went out there in the middle of the woods in Indiana with his friends and it was a still speed over the property. Guess what his luckily somebody had the camera. He got to it with these three drunk white guys in the middle of the woods. They tried to lynch him. They try to lynch him in the woods. In this predominantly white town outside of Bloomington somewhere. Because he in his all the come on guys, come on, come on guys, let him go. I mean literally got these two guys getting hung around a tree like this. Getting pinned up. Trying to get into it into a dispute with these two parties. They grabbed the black guy. Then there was another black guy. <laughs> Did you see? You remember a couple of years ago in Charlotte, Virginia, was with with the when, when Black Lives Matter, and Antifa, and the white uh, through over three hundred nationalists. They, uh, yeah, they, everybody was beating the crap out of each other. The black dude. They showed this on the camera. 
They chased this brother all the way in the garage and beat the hell like the beat the living day side daylights out of him. Because he wanna be part of that protest. He they cornered him and beat him up. This is this ain't no no joke. And some black people I learned this. You need to stand out and stay out of white people's uh, affair, their fight. What is Antifa versus versus the, the Boogaloo Boys? Or stay out, black folks, stay out of their fight. Stay out of their fight. If you black or female or a male, stay out of their fight. Because these folks ain't playing. Stay out of their fight. Don't even get into their political arguments about with Trump and Biden. This is the year black people stay out of it. Stay out of their way. Because clearly this they're showing irreverent ahead. This is the truth. And I and I learned this. I learned as I got old, stay out of white folks' business. <laughs> I'm gonna come up. Stay out of white folks if they got it, that's their business. Between the conservative right, the far left. Let them fight. You stay out of it. Stop trying to be the, the, this this savior. Because you're gonna get the worst end of it. This is what happened, and this is the case that would happen in Indiana. They almost lynched him. There was another case. It was an Iowa. A black man got killed, and they chopped his body off the part. They chopped him into pieces. He lived in one them predominantly in Iowa, all white town. He made friends with these big people. Guess what? Something happened. They end up chopping them up, and here we hear it was only in, in that later. You are in a war, and you don't even know you were in a war. And you have to, and it's, it's true, you have to keep your head on a swivel. And so you conservative Negroes need to understand that. You are, you, are, you are in the middle of a war, and you don't even know it from both sides. Because there are some people who are acting out their race is mentality. This is what happened in Iowa. This is what happened in Indiana. Going through these little, through these little towns like where Jonathan and Price live at, because you're part of them. You think you're part of them. You gotta understand, you're not. And now, you see. And if you look on YouTube, and cases, and Facebook, and all this stuff, and go, it's popular. Pile, pile cases of. A popping up of unsolved mysteries. I mean, there's other people being murdered by, you know, for serial killers, whatever. But this is, they literally lynching people. They're going back to the way they used to do with black people, castrate them and chop them up in pieces. This is happening right now as we speak. You, that's why I say you live in them. That's why I mentioned earlier about one of my videos about going to a sundown town. Because these folks are activating their, their, their racism. Black people, if you, if whatever little town you stay out of white folks' business. Stay out of their business. It's not your fight. This And I learned this, it's not your fight. If they, what do you think, James? I said, ah, uh, you know, it just recently, well, that's only praying for the country. But as far as I'm concerned with, with Trump and Biden, they're two rich white, like I say, two rich white white men. That's gonna have extremely a lot of wealth, and these people, and, and as a, a sector, as a class, the poor whites and the middle class whites think that, it, you know, let them let them deal with it, let them go to war with each other, because you know, we we get fucked, we get to tell, and we when we jump and fight with them like in the civil war, we end up get. Getting on the fuck bad end of the deal. That's why I don't take no sides, and I, and I agree with some black people. It should be black first, because it's because no matter say what you think, Jane, what you think, what do you think? Are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? No. Because I'm seeing the same results, and then then it's like wow. Then it's like, and it, I I think back to my time, that I was. With with so, my one of my so-called friends, and, he, and that 
because he knew two black guys, me and his other person, but it, it didn't change the fact that I, that we that was his black friend. I was not his friend. Just this is, and this is sad, but I'm I'm making the video. I made another video of concerning that I've been wanting to talk about this. I've been wanting you got black people, and so you you get and you black people that don't like your own people, you get your wake up call. Just like Jonathan Price, that he made it a letter saying that, that you know, and it's, it was a letter on why he felt the way he did. He, he didn't like. Barely said that he didn't get no support from his own people, and but when it came to these particular these particular feelings, they feed him, they fed him, and that's nice and darn dandy. And he think that all people opposite of this was going be was be in his corner. How you doing, guy? That you you don't understand what time we live in, and he didn't understand what time we're living in. He didn't understand. Didn't have to come. I don't know because when you there's a lot of black people that live in st small towns like that throughout America. They don't really don't believe that there are some people in your town. Is that racist? They, they and they're willing to activate on racism. They look you are you are an enemy combat on your skin color. It's clearly it it is it, it shown it's popped up when we see cases that months and months later I even did on another video set where there's two young black light skinned men got got hung seriously got lynched in Oklahoma that nobody don't know if this has happened two years ago but the John prices of the world don't understand this. Don't matter who you raise, raise around them, you better keep your eyes on the swivel. I don't care if they say, let's, 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 let's. I don't get on the boat with some people. Because there was a young man down in South Carolina, he was the only black man, and mysteriously, he, he disappeared out in the middle of the water. Drowned. Now they can't find where his body is at. There was a it was a black woman in, in some part of Georgia, being around her friends, being she was the only black woman, and she mysteriously got got hemmed up with the wrong people. Now, no one's charged in her murder. This is going, and, and I'm trying to tell you, watch your friends, not just your friends that look like you. The opposite of you. Watch who know who the people you're around, because this thing ain't no joke, and you really don't know who they are. And this is what what I'm saying. And now we have seen these cases like, and this this is something you were seeing back in the damn fifties and sixties. Black people getting lynched and disappeared, hung up on trees, seeing it, and now it's ruled that now they can't say it's a lynching; it's a suicide. Oh, he, he, he was out of some kind of depression, covering up. And the person that clearly was murdered. Who's going to know? And they're getting away with murder. It ain't just somebody in the city getting murdered. You got psychos that's out there in the little small towns. Will murder you faster than somebody's in the city that look like one of your own people. This is my message to those confederate those confederate loving black folks conservative black folks I don't see no racism oh you're gonna you're gonna see a brother you're gonna see a sister it's just a matter of time it's just a matter of time like Jonathan Price down there in Texas a little small old town Texas you're gonna see it it's rearing his head right now Somebody gonna show you their true colors. And I've been in, I lived in, and I once when I was away at school, I know it was God covered me. I was living in a little town called Nelsonville, Ohio. Okay, let me show you how crazy this was. This school 
Nelsonville, Ohio, which is two hours away from Columbus. And anybody that knows of Ohio, been down to know what Athens is, you know who Ohio University is, is like about two or three counties up from that town. The town is surrounded with woods. This 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 is the area where white boys go out there and shoot arrows and hunt hunt deer and coon and groundhog and stuff like that. And it, I mean and 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 the dormitory is right me was the woods right next door. So someone if a couple of dudes want to grab you, snatch your ass up and, and put you in the woods, they wouldn't be able to never leave a fine because Nelsonville was surrounded with, with, with woods. So I had to keep my head on the swivel at the age of, and I was about 21, 22 years old at the time. But luckily, <laughs> it was more black folks down there. And, for, and I hung around for, mostly foreign sometimes. And we in this little little country town, they even had had the flag. The people had a fit when they had when they had their own personal flags from their countries in front of not all over town, but just in in front of the house. These folks had a fit. So made them down down. See, this is America. You don't them little towns is something else. They 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 show their true colors. That's why I can I can tell you about towns like like this. See y'all, and like I mentioned earlier about when I was in Kentucky, when I lived in Kentucky, <laughs> and you know you got some Negroes that got that 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 colonial mindset. They they just don't they think that they're part of them. <laughs> oh my God. And you, 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 it's because you with Miss Ann's daughter, and, and those of you that know what Miss Ann means, it don't mean that everybody's cool with you being with Miss Ann's daughter. You feel me, bro? You feel, I'm just telling you, these folks ain't playing. And these, and these Jim Bob, these hillbilly Bobs, it, they'll snatch you up. They, they're not playing. In this type of, type of year, and you better be careful because this is this is the main type of year people be murdering people for sacrifice and things. So you really gotta be careful because it's rituals. This is the truth. This is the God's honest truth. But I don't know what some of our people. You know that I said that somewhere along the line you're gonna figure it out. You might be one of the young black people that, that but you gonna figure it out. You gonna figure out that he it don't matter what your political affiliation is. It don't matter what small town, because at the end of your day your melon is the appearance. Your melon is. And when you go out with your white friends and stuff, you go in the little areas, they gonna let you know. They gonna let you know. Because you're gonna find like like Officer Lucas. Who put five bullets in a Jonathan? Not what they really think about you. And they'll get away with it. They'll find some attorney saying he was under duress and distress. They'll, they'll find a way. They did that with, with Chauvin up there in Minneapolis and, and, and countless of others. And you and some of these black people, like Candace Owens and other people, you we in the middle of a freaking war, and they don't even know we. And, and you and then you think because and you trying to find make them out to be, be the uh, dictator. Make them sound. Make make it seem like they're the ones. Your own people deserve to be put to death. And sooner or later. Because they live in the inner city, because you know you, you want these kind of black folks that think that, it, it, good for the good and good for the great. But what you don't understand is, they, it, once they get rid of some of them black folks and we get rid of each other, they're coming after you. You're not, you're not part of them. And the candidates don't get pulled out of the town when they're not familiar who she is. They'll treat her like they're personal, and she go get the mouth and off, whatever. One white boy is gonna put 
put their foot up her ass. Candace Owens. Now, they'll remind you who you are. You're just a B in a personal N N B. Nick B. Put put the sentence together. That's what they'll do, and not only they'll do that, they'll put they'll try to put their hands on you, saying you resisted arrest. So you you so you conservative Negroes don't understand this, who don't like your own type. We in this together, whether you Trump or whether you Biden. You we in this together. Why is we in this together? Because there's a segment is 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 can't stand you from the beginning. And no matter how many good white people treat treat you, you better worry about the th half a thousand that don't. They can't stand you. It's the ones that's dangerous, because you're gonna come across them faster than the ones that's, that's do, and that's a fact. This is the truth. I'm not trying to say you gotta be bitter. But don't put your don't put your foot down on your own people when you're black. You're black just like me. No matter what part of the country you live in, you're black. Right now, you are under war, and you don't even know it. You live in a little small little little small rinky dink town, and you don't even know it. I know what I've been out in them towns. See, I'm I'm the brother that not just been. In the city, I've been on the other side of the woods. I know what they're about. See, you don't know what's, and I feel sorry for some of you black folks like that. You really think that you, you really don't think that you're black. You really don't understand. And you hate your own. You'll turn against your own people. You'll turn against your own people. Think that you're going to get some kind of reward. Just like they did. And I, it makes me think about the movie Glory. You, get, you always got the one educated Negro that thinks that he's better because he come from fine stock. But in the end, the white man let him know you're still a Negro. Just like the rest of the Negroes. Don't matter if you was a blue coat, a gray coat, you're still a Negro. That's a fact. That's that's that one addresses to black this to, to, to the black people who have that mindset. Because it's time to deal with you. <laughs> it's time to deal with you. You really don't you think you're gonna get get away from if they kill off half the ones in the inner city because they believe that criminality they and after they didn't kill some of them off, they come they ain't gonna trust you much longer. They can't trust you. And I remember it was, uh, they asked the same interviewer, asked them, what do you think about the ones that, that done this? And it was a Richard Spencer. And I'm glad there was someone like a Richard Spencer who was a white nationalist said this. He said, no, he said, yeah, that's fine and dandy. And I'm glad they do a good work for us for turn against one another. But no, I don't trust them. So, so while you being all American, conservative and pro this and pro that them saying white people don't trust you who you trying to cater for you silly negro this is this is the reality and you now you see and when you see someone like a Jonathan Price who's blue lives matter yeah blue lives matter all right Blue Lives cost him his life for Blue Lives Matter. And the same Blue Lives Matter gonna probably help Lucas get out of jail who gunned him down. Gun him down because he was trying to do the right thing, be the superhero, be the good guy that always wanted to step in, step in between and save everybody. We turn around, be the man. Some of us do, and don't realize they can't stand you. And like I, it makes me think about the man, young man that went to Indiana. He got on the same side of his white friends, but his some they got got to a conflict. 
his white friends, I don't see them throwing blows against the, the men that held him up by the, by the neck. All they did was record the shit. The black dude was the one that, that paid the price. I ain't seen none of his white friends get there and, and throw blows and, and come back at the ones. Same way it was in Charlottesville. The, the brother, young brother got beat to death. Where was his, his rest of his counter counterparts? He got beat to death by these white nationalists by himself. They had someone had to come in and had to stop him. I mean this guy had he was all busted up and everything. <laughs> Bruh, sis, stay out of white folks' business. If they in the Civil War, stay out of it. Just a modern day civil war. Let them deal with it. And that'd be my advice to you. Because you're gonna end up on a losing hand. Especially you face up against a, a racist some biggest hundred hundreds, hundreds of them. And you think your white counterparts, they might beat him half of them and 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 and, 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 and shoot and beat you up and do, do worse to you. This is what I learned. Stay out of these folks' business. That's their war. It's the, if you're a Hebrew, it's Esau versus Esau. Biden versus Trump. Let them war it out. Let their people war it out. Because our people pay, pay the blood of this crap. Trying to, do, trying to be saviors and trying to be good and trying to be Christian-like. And only get and only get screwed in, in the damn end. That's what I learned. I learned. I used to I used to be that kind of person. I'm I'm not telling you something that I know. I'm telling you something I experienced. Sometimes you gotta learn to stay out of folks' business. Black people need to stay out of white folks' business. Let stay out of their politics, everything. Just just get your get your stuff in like everybody else. Just like these other nations, you know. <laughs> but stay out of the Main Street business. Stay out of the bit. That's that's the best advice I would tell anybody. If you're gonna vote, vote for your own interests. But now, you see that this young man, a black man, for Blue Lives Matter, pro Trump, community act community love by all people but out of all people one pe person was on that police force a white person into his life why did they do it subconsciously he's seen a black man and some black people don't understand this you still have no 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 it, it must be something wrong with let, let's look in this background and see what did he do when he was in grade school? He had to do something. He, no, no, no. This is some kind of psychological, biological criminality in, in his, this black person's mind that caused him. Why? They're trying to justify his death. And they're going to do the same thing with him when it comes to this defense. And in this, in, in, in this letter that he, 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 he met... You know, he prays and saying that how his, his, you know, he, he would do more for his, these people. He got more love from these people. And heck, he said, he's I even blame my own people in a letter that I love white women, whatever. Like, well, you know, he didn't say all women, he said white women. I mean, that was his preference. But still, did you have to turn against your own people? For your own people. No matter what. And no matter how many people I come across. I'm still not going to forget I'm a black man in America. And every day. In some form or fashion. Good or bad days. You're going to be some in some form or fashion reminded of it. No matter if you're in a city. No matter if you're a town. A rural town. A, a, a mid-sized big city. You're a black man. And people, and in a lot of the cases, have not because you were had to be doing anything wrong. 
you could have been just asking there was people that didn't do anything that complied with what the police officer said and they still gunned them down they complied whatever the officer said to do he complied he had his hands up turn around shot standing with stun gun shot him with his gun now what now what a blue light matter loving person now what black man now what it ain't about race what the hell is it then what the hell is it then he had what is it there's, there's got to be something well what was the fight about he was going to resolve to come to find out the way witnesses said that he was come to break up the fight both black and white mostly white And it was the officer, and he did try to explain to the officer what he was down there to do. He was he was a non-threatening person. Come up to the officer, I'm here to break up the fight. Pow, pow, pow. In Texas. In this little town in Texas. Don't, I don't mean that all oh, Texas. Well, this little town in Texas. Now I'm curious what this, what this case is going, how this case is going to be about. Now, now, they made an excuse about Floyd believing that he had some kind of drug in his system and that he was put in a counterfeit 20 bill. They made, they said that, and they lied as, and, and, and lied about that to say, well, that part of it was the reason why it was the drug that took him out, not the officer's knee on his neck. They said with Breonna Taylor, they, they said that with her, well, she was part of, it was a stash house. They had so-called recordings. So, so this is the reason why we had to let these cops go and the reason why the Attorney General did what he did. Now I'm curious what, what they're going to do about the one, this town in Texas. Then, and then with Ahmaud Aubrey, before we get to that, he was the one, why is he, why is he going through that neighborhood? Well, they show him go up on the property. He didn't take anything off the property. He was just going, looking at the house like most people do. And then someone said that there was a black man run through in there, with, in which his parents confirmed that he just liked to jog, like most people do. They like to jog and run. And so you had these two, two inbreds, Klansmen, freak, freaking got up on their pickup truck, try to stop him, hold him, and, 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 and jumped and put shotguns on him, you know, and he's trying to get whatever his so-called information and then a blowing and right and then there was a neighbor that caught this on camera put it right on camera in his last days of murder then to come to find out I'm was curious what's gonna happen with that case this is a civilian a racial incident and in, in, in Brunswick Georgia good old a lot of these good old the good old towns what about the people up there in, in Iowa who killed that black man, chopped him up into pieces? He, you can tell when you look at the pictures of him, he didn't look like he was harmless. He looked like he was the kind of person who would be your best friend and, and kick it and eat and drink with you. And they put him, they put him to death. You got these four family members that chopped his behind up, put him in Iowa, put him, put him in the freak. Put him and then didn't then buried him in the ground. His family found out recently. I'm trying to, and, and then you got these Confederate loving, so-called hate self-hating Negroes don't understand stand this. You are in the war based on the melon in your skin. We all are in, in, in the midst of it, and we don't know who the enemy is. So, but the, the, but the, the, the sad thing is that you're more enemy than they are because you don't even like your own people. That's what's really sad. Oh, I'm, I'm telling the truth. And, I, and like I said, and I've been, I live in these towns, I visit towns like this. I know them entirely when I see some black people. It's really sad. You think, let's this foreigner come, 
a stranger coming to our town. But yet you go to the next town over, they wonder what you what you what you passing through a certain time of day, a certain time of night. Yeah. And no matter what state you live in, from the southern state to a northern state to a western state to a midwestern state, you gotta be careful, black men, black women, and child. Because you don't know. Because you in the midst of, of you never know. You never know what kind of person. And it's always it's something I said this before, it's something psychologically wrong with somebody. When somebody can look at a person and just gun them down when they pose no threat. This man posed no threat. He was trying to be the solution, the peaceful one, the Christian one, the God loving fear one, trying to do the right, the righteous one. And what happened? This idiot guns him down on purpose. And people say, oh, that. I don't know what that is. Race. Race at ism. At the, the spirit of racism is coming up in some of these people. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, it's race. There's no other excuse. When he had the witnesses saying that he come there who were white, saying that he, was, he wasn't the one. And they kept on, no, officer, he's not the one. He's not the one. Pow. They he killed him anyway. People gotta wake up. We are, we, we, black folks gotta wake up. We in, we in the middle of a warfare. They were right. Some of these people, some of these people been telling us they were right. And there's a part of me that didn't want to believe it, but yeah, I see it. Oh, I see it clearly. No matter what, and then you see the case like, what did this person do? You know, did they do this? They do that? Then you come to find out, no, they, you know, they complied. They, they might ask a few questions. Then, it, then people say, well, why do you blacks keep crying about slavery? Well, hell, you've seen the same remnants of slavery. I got it, you know, you know, when it comes to a black person, where are you going? Where, it's almost like, where's your papers at? Why are you in this town? Why are you, why are you shopping here? Why are you walk, left, walking on the left side of the road? Why are you driving that nice car? It's saying this to black people. What your children doing now? This is what, in every case, every case, uh, in across the United States, in some town, in some town, some, and good, thank God, someone captured this on camera, showing that this is you like this is crazy. I thought we were living in a land of freedom and justice. That's yes, so did I. But apparently, there are some people that feel. I mean, they had, I mean, t t think about this, ladies and gentlemen. They had to make up a law to, to stop using 911 just because you see a black person doing anything. What was what, 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 what he doing, man? What was she, what, she, what the black woman doing? They, I don't know. They just, they just look like they're walking through the neighborhood. They jogging through the neighborhood. They must be. They on the jog. They jogging through a park. But we don't have a race problem. They selling selling water out there on the corner. We don't have a race problem. They barbecue in the park. We don't have a race problem. Yes, we do get a race problem. And we and, and we try to and then we talk about it and then we, we do all these things and it's the same old thing. They burnt they brown they protest, okay, we're gonna have community outreach they've done everything they like and like the one brother said we sung we danced whatever and it still go back to the same thing it goes back to the same thing and I feel sorry for those people in Minneapolis because there's a double standard and that's one of the most northern cities you you can get so this ain't just the southern this northern city northern like a northern Alabama because they let two officers off. About three or four officers off for killing black folks. But the one 
officer who was a Somali American shoot a white woman, make sure he get 12 years. Because he, he, he overreacted. They all overreacted. The Somali, ex Somalian cop gets 12 years. The other cops get off. In Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, well, oh, wait a minute. We don't have a race problem. So even among the police department, that you, you can see the injustice right there. There was a situation, was it was in Louisiana? White cops do something, black cops shoot a, a suspect a, who happened to be white, had his son in the truck. Anybody remember this case? Next thing you know, they unloaded something on them. Next thing you know, they put 30, 40 rounds. They're doing 20, 30 years in prison to this day. They do the same thing in Louisiana, dealing with a, 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 a person and they gunned them down on camera. But we don't have a race. Two officers shot a black man and probably many, many more. And they don't do a one sl slick of dime. But we don't have, but we need blacks on the police department. We, we need a community up. What? When the justice is not even equal. When all cases was irrational, all cases should have been per prosecuted murder, but it's something about this that gets them, gets them out. Oh, that's not privilege. What the hell is it then? Did someone post bond for somebody? It keeps happening over and over. We keep denying that it, it is. We have a race problem in this country. So I can understand why you have a grandmaster she said damn we gonna have to make up have our own sovereign people what you mean sovereignty because you're not you're not being justified with this look at what you're doing with the citizens you're saying that once you're saying that we up under the constitutional law but you're still saying but because you're on the constitutional law that these particular people you can put to death but these other particular people would, would have to be have an apologize. They would have to have, if someone did this to the Asians, if someone did to these other people, it'd be so much, it, it would be something done on the, all the way to the politically to the top. But when a black person do it, oh well, it's just, that's what it is. And here are black people who's a foundation and country, whether they've fought, fought in both wars from the history all the way up to now, been faithfully in the service and they get and no matter if they're a black veteran to a black whatever long they black and they've been an outstanding citizen they still get gunned down no matter what they what they do no matter if they don't have a clean record they still get gunned down no matter what they do they still get gunned down and you and, and, and then we don't see that the, that the same slave codes it is applying right now. That's why the, the police is acting the way they do. Because it must be some type of law in the Constitution keep allowing this stuff not to happen. Oh, but oh, it's, com it's, it's coming day with all this. Because as they keep putting this, the ones who try to do righteousness, is so they're called trying to get the unrighteous out the way they're going to come focus on the righteous black people just like any other people but particularly black people one they try to eradicate off the dog on trying to eradicate many of us they, uh, they, they're doing it and then it, then then it, 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 it that's why people wondering why is all why is all this keep happening we dealt with, we seen this in the 60s, we seen this in the 50s, we seen this in the 40s and the 30s, we seen this in the 80s and the 90s. Why does this keep happening? Because it, not only because it is a people still being justified and, and, uh, and, and this black people are the sacrifice of the death. That's why. Because they still have been treated as equally as citizens. That's why. And not the ones that says, um, that, that's why and people and, and, and there are some people that go along with this narrative it's not going to be equal 
that's why I say racism is not going not going away. Because if when you do something right and do the righteous thing, you still get put the, the dog on death. No matter what side of the political coin you on, if you're African American, no matter where you live at, no matter what income you got, you're going to pay the price. Because envious and jealousy and oppression is supposed to be upon you. And they feel that that they feel that they should. They're not, they're not just saying it, they displaying it on, on you. But people like Jonathan and many people like black people like him don't understand. You and it. You think that so-called the ones that's the troublemakers, the drug dealers, and the black people they see that you think they justify killing them or the ones that are gang members and the ones, oh no, no. Cause, Cause they gonna start coming after some of you black folks. Why, why us? We, we're not like them. We're educated, we got a college degree. I, I, my, you know, we the, we the Jones fan, black Jones. We, we, my daddy, my daddy fought for the North and, 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 and college educated. My mom is a, a business owner. It don't matter. You dumb Negro. You're black. Don't matter what your organization is. Don't matter your affiliation is. You're black. And, and it's, these people are triggered. And they don't want to put, they really don't want to put some of these crazy people who are like this in prison on hate charges. Why? Because when they look at them, they look at themselves. They look at their family members. And there's some people who have an underlying they have an underline of this. Don't believe me? Look at the past cases, what I'm just telling you. Everything come down to race. There's no true justice. There ain't gonna be no true justice. We can sing and dance, change laws, but it ain't gonna change. Black death is innocent death gonna keep going. And they okay with that. And sadly, there's some black people I agree with, they're okay with it too. And they don't know some of the ones that's okay with it. Someone around it is gonna affect them too. Because you're looking at the Lord, because you up there you out there with those the, those those people, those high fluent people, and you think you're not gonna be a part of it. Somebody is gonna affect you in some type of way. I'm, particularly I'm talking to my black people. It's gonna affect you in some type of way. You, you hide fluting Negroes. It's going to affect you in some type of way. Because you think because you got the college education. It's going to affect you because you're in some kind of political high arena. Hell, think about this. Let me give, let me give you a clue. Bob Johnson. Let me, let, let this, and someone like Bob Johnson can get stopped on his own property. A billionaire, a black billionaire. He was around real quick by a security company. Are you are, are you the servant? What are you doing here? A black billionaire. So what makes you think that you're gonna be opposed to that and he's a black billionaire that, that built up and he with no criminal record and nothing, no tax evasion, a good, honest, hard working black man that may sell billions and millions of dollars in a legitimate business. What makes you think that you some some up, you uppity Negro think that you're going to come to him and he get questioned on his own property? What makes you think that you're better? I got five degrees. What makes you think that you're better? I, I make a three, four, five, hundred, six, six figure. What makes you think that you're better? Well, I'm a part of this organization. What makes you think that you're better? And they will sacrifice you. You don't get it. The evil that's against us as a people, you don't get it. The 
animosity, the jealousy, the hatred. And you think, and you, you have black folks that think that you're immune to it. You just, because you're in some little small town. But I don't, that don't happen, it's coming. It's coming your way. Trust me, if it ain't been there, it's out there. The wave is like the coronavirus. It's coming your way. But I just wanted to make a video about this to my fellow African Americans who think like this. Your wake up call is coming. Till next time, you, you take care of some of you and keep your eyes open and be careful and remember. We are, we are our own people. We are our own friends. We have no friends. Till next time, be blessed.